Hi everyone, we're about to go over the elements of art. Of course, elements are things that make up other things like hydrogen and oxygen make up water, but there are elements that make up artwork. Artists have to use something in order to communicate their ideas. These are the elements that allow artists to do that. First, I'm going to show you this. It's a mnemonic device for how to remember the elements and if you want the principles as well. Take a look over here and you'll see fuzzy little tame cats sit very still. Each letter corresponds with the first letter of each of the elements of art that we're about to discuss right now. We'll start with line. If you take a stick and move it through sand, a pencil on paper, you will be creating an actual line. Line refers to a continuous mark made on a surface or the edge of a shape could actually be considered a line. For example, an implied line where two values meet. Here we have a drawing that is done by a very famous caricaturist named Al Hirschfeld. And Al Hirschfeld is a person who unfortunately died a few years ago, but used line very effectively to communicate. There are very dark lines and light lines and single lines and multiple lines and jagged lines and zigzaggy lines and all kinds of lines that he uses to communicate, just like artists do. Line is our first element of art. You'll notice that on his suspender, there is a dark area that meets a light area, and there you have an implied line. There's no actual line there. There is a dark shape, which goes from thick to thin, but no actual line. All right. Shape. Speaking of the suspender shape, a shape is a, a, an area that is enclosed by a line. So if the ends of the line meet, then you have an enclosed area that is totally flat. So if you think of a circle or a triangle or a square or a hexagon or a trapezoid, those are all shapes. They are flat. Here's a painting done by Stuart Davis, and it's all about shapes. You can see that the only way we can sense that there's any depth or use of space at all is because it appears that these shapes are overlapping each other. But in fact, the shapes are flat, flat shapes. Form. Form is when a shape becomes three-dimensional and starts taking up space. So if I say circle, that's a shape. If I say sphere, like a ball, that's a form. If I say triangle, that's a shape. If I say hexagon, I'm sorry, a pyramid or cone, like an ice cream cone, that is a form. You are a form. The room you're sitting in is a form. Those are all examples of forms. Here is a sculpture. By definition, sculptures are forms. Forms are three-dimensional. They take up space. This is a sculpture called The Kiss. In order to appreciate it, you have to walk around it in order to see it because when you walk around it, you are exploring the sculpture's space. This is a form. You will notice that there is an implied line because the sculpture is light and the background is dark. That is not an actual line, it is an implied line. Space, as we've been talking about, refers to the distance between, around, within objects. You can't have a sculpture without the use of space. If you take a look at this picture, you will see that we have a real sense of space, but it's implied space because it's obviously on your computer screen. So you can't stick your hand down the hallway. But when I shot this picture, that was real space. Space is the area around, within, going down this hallway, obviously. You can also have negative space and positive space. So if you take a look at where the doorway opens up, we could consider that a hole or negative space. The rest of the hallway would be positive space because positive space is filled with a subject, negative space is not.